My name is Ann McAdams, and I'm a member of Harris Chapel AME Zion Church, right next to the library here. Yes. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to give you a little history about Harris Chapel. Harris Chapel used to be located downtown Canton, where the old post office on Park Street used to be. It was moved to its present location probably in the 20s or 30s. Yes. And uh, when it was downtown, it had a, they did a school and church. And Mrs. Georgia McAfee at that time was the teacher for the school. Uh, the name Reverend C. R. Harrison, who was instrumental in Zion having the bi monthly magazine, The Star of Zion, uh, Reverend Harrison became elected bishop in 1888, thus, the name Harris Chapel. It was named after him. Our present pastor is, our present bishop is Bishop George E. Battle, Jr. Uh, like I said, we've had several pastors at Harris Chapel over the years. Wonderful men and women have been our pastors. But in eight, 1980, Reverend Leroy Staley was assigned to Harris Chapel. Reverend Leroy Staley passed away last, th this past December, 2020. And under his pastorship, a new church was erected, which was built on the same lot as the old one. His faith, his love, and the prayers and faith of the small congregation moved into the church in 1980. While we were waiting for the church to be built, we had service every Sunday downtown in the town hall. Yes, and, and, and we enjoyed it. Uh, mayor C.W. Harden of Canton was the mayor at that time. Uh, we love those of us who go to Harris Chapel. There's so much love in our church. Our elder members helped me to get this together, Mrs. Mrs. Gertrude Logan and Mrs. Violet Paris, who are the eldest members of Harris Chapel. Mrs. Logan is 100 years old. Just this past 2020, she stopped coming to church because of her hearing. And, uh, but otherwise, she's very active. She does everything that every, all the other members do. And Miss Violet, who is 96, Mrs. Parrish, who is 96, she comes every Sunday. She still drives, and we just look to her so very much because she, she inspires us so much. And we love her. We love she, all of All of our elder members, we love them. Miss Nora. Connelly, we love them all, and we want to model our lives. The ladies in the church would love to model their lives after these ladies. Yes. Are there any questions you want to ask me? Right now, we're in the process of trying to get someone to play music. We sing a cappella. We have a choir. It consists of very few members, like our church. But we sing every Sunday in our church services mm -hmm. when our church service, when churches go, you know, yeah. before the pandemic. Yeah. We were singing every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we just enjoy each other. Our pastor, who is Reverend Leroy Staley, that under him, the church was built. His son now is our pastor, oh, yeah. Reverend William Eric Staley. And he and his family are just wonderful. We're just so glad to have them with us. Yes, we love them so much. Yes, and he's, he's very instrumental in this community. Mm -hmm. He supports the church. Through him, the church supports a lot of things that goes on in the community. Yes. Yes. I've been in Haywood County all my life. I was, you know, raised in Waynesville, got married and moved to Canton. I have three 
wonderful sons to live, to live away. And my oldest son, he and his family live here in the Canton. Mm -hmm. And they take part in the churches and that they attend. And, and I'm just thankful, just thankful that mm -hmm. they do. Yes, tried to raise them in that way. You know, they all three went to Pisgah High School, graduated from Pisgah High School. My oldest son went into the military. My two other sons went into college, and now they're working and supporting their families. Mm -hmm. Yes, they graduated from college. Oh, yes. That's good. Mm -hmm. Where did you go to high school? In at Reynolds High School. Okay here in Canton. I lived in Waynesville. In Waynesville, I went to Pigeon Street Elementary School. That's the multicultural center. That wasn't my school. It was another older school that has been torn down. But then after getting into the seventh grade, we were bused here to Canton for middle school and high school. Yes, and we had wonderful, wonderful teachers at high school here in Canton, and also at Pigeon Street, a lot of integrity, and taught us a whole lot, a lot, a lot, they taught us. Uh, we've had a lot of people to graduate from Reynolds, RNs, nurses, pilots, uh, just all kind of professional people, people that worked at NASA, you know, from Reynolds, you know, so, so we're happy. We're happy about what has gone on here in Haywood County. Mm -hmm. Even though we're very few, a lot of our people have done a lot. People in Canton would be surprised at how, how our professionals are, how many professionals that have come out of Reynolds High School, mm -hmm. and also Pisgah, lawyers and, you know. Mm -hmm. We have different programs, of course, Right now, with the pandemic, we're doing right. yes. nothing, but we have appreciation yearly for our pastor. It's, that's a big thing, that we have appreciation. We invite the different churches around. We invite a choir. We invite someone to come and uh, preach that Sunday. It's a big thing. It goes on practically all day, mm -hmm. and, and we serve. During that time at the church, we serve everybody. You know, it's a, big, it's a big deal. We also have other programs, homecoming. Uh, homecoming, we invite uh, former members from near and far to come. It's just a big day that day, too. We have many programs that we, we have at our church. And I just miss it so very much because of this pandemic. Yes, and our pastor, he, he, he takes part in a lot of things. He's, he's, he's the president of the Christian Education Department for the Asheville District. He, he's a certified plumber. He has done so much since he has been our pastor, which has only been three years, improving our church. Mm -hmm. He had a steeple. Yes. He had a steeple yes. put on. That was some work that his his father wanted to do, but it's, he's done it, you know. And when he built, when his father built the church, he wanted that, so his son did finished it. Yes. No, we just just any and everybody is welcome to Harris Chapel. Mm -hmm. We love everybody, and and we have white members. We have. Black men, well, you know, it's it's not. We want everybody to know that we love everybody, and any and everybody is welcome to our church. Yes. Well, hello, I am Marcia Conley Miller. I'm a member of Harris Chapel Annie Zine Church, which is located on Prospect Street here in Canton, right behind the Canton Library. And I'm giving you a little bit of history about our building and our church. Our congregation, we have a small little congregation. It's not very big. We have a wonderful, loving congregation. Um, our little church started down what they would call the lumber yard at Champion Paper. Um, Mr. Osborne 
who was a local businessman, wanted the people of color to have a place to worship. And that's where we worshiped until Champion started growing and uh, having more products to do. So he bought another little piece. He owned quite a bit of land. And this little piece of land up here uh, behind the library was where they moved our worship, uh, our building. And this building, that was back in the late 1800s. And the building, per se, was used for the Methodists and the Baptists. We would switch off each, we didn't have services every Sunday because imagine as small as the black population was, you had your Baptists, you had your Methodists, and you have your Church of God. So we all switched out. And during the weekday, that sanctuary was the school for the children of color. I have been told that at one time, there was a school in the Bethel area, which I will do a little more research on that and look it up, but I believe that because I hear about how they used to have some type of sawmill or something up toward Bethel. So we did have a place there, but then Mr. Osmond got us this here at Prospect, and that's where we were uh, until maybe early 30s or maybe late 20s. The Baptist, which is Pleasant Grove, moved their building to Gibson Town, what we call Gibson Town, and we were left the Methodist congregation with the building there at Prospect. And that building stood until 1984. And here is a rendition. My mother drew this picture of our old, it was a little white uh, covered church. We had a little pot belly stove in it. It could be very cold. It's hard, love my Lord and Savior, but it's kind of hard when you're sitting there. <laughs> praying and saying, yes, Lord, please. It was very cold, but we had such great times in that little church. We stand on the shoulders of so many elders in this community, not only black, white, Latino, uh, Native American. They all joined together, and we are who we are today. That dwelling was torn down in 1984, the winter, when we were under the uh, leadership of Reverend Leroy Staley, who was from Rutherfordton. And he built what you see standing there now. If you come up, and while I'm saying that, please, anytime you are invited to, we don't have visitors to our church. When you walk in that door, you become a member, just get used to it, you, you'll be talked to just like you've been there every day and every Sunday. But, um, that building went down in 1984 in the winter, and then he built that sanctuary, and that's where we've been. Um, we've had, he stayed with us for 15 years in that building. We were his first church he was assigned, and the Lord works in so many mysterious ways. His son is now our pastor, Reverend William Eric Staley, and we are his first charge or his first church that has ever been assigned. And it's just like we picked up where we left off with his father. Unfortunately, we lost Reverend Staley this past December. We love that family and they have brought us through so much. Uh, we were under the pastorship of Deborah Wilkinson. She was the pastor who worked for a very wealthy family and they made the decision to pay our mortgage off on our little church while she was our pastor. And what can you say? God, to God be the glory. He has taken care of that little place, the, we call it the little church on the hill. And since uh, where we are today and with our new Reverend Staley, William Staley, and he just recently- A steeple, a white steeple on our church. So he's just picking up where his father left off with us. Um, we have done a lot of improvements inside and we continue to just work toward the Lord and his glory. Um, I don't think I can tell you anything else about the history of it, but anytime you want to know more, please just give us a call. My name again is Marcia Conley Miller and uh, anyone that is a member of our church will be happy to get in touch with you, come over and join us for work, worship service. I know right now, we don't know when we're gonna to get together, when we're gonna be able to hug and 
treat each other like we used to. But um, whenever that happens or whenever it is ready for it to happen, because right now I believe we're where the Lord wants us to be. So I want to thank Miss Jennifer for the opportunity to share a little bit of the history of the people of color in this community, because it takes everybody's history that happens 24-7 every day.